one of a very good YouTube friend is asking me this question, Sahid Hamid. And let me try to read this question. Let me try to solve it. The question is saying, determine the value of k and m. We need to find the value of k and m such that the following function g f x, this function g f x, is continuous and differentiable at all points. So whenever if question is saying us that if it is continuous, then Every, every time you know we have to keep it one thing in mind that at any point when you're checking the continuity then that time you'll get left hand limit right hand limit and the functional value at that point all will be equal keep in mind this is the must condition that a function have to uh, have to satisfy to be a continuous at any point so if the left hand limit right hand limit and the function value at a point is equal then that the function is differentiable and the next condition we have here is differentiable you know if any function is differentiable then you have to understand that at that point the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative both are equal all right this is the second thing we need to understand here to solve this question so if left hand derivative and right hand derivative equal then i can say that the function is differentiable and the question already saying is saying that gfx is continuous and is differentiable. I mean, in this function, at any points, they are saying even at all points. So at all point, left hand limit, right hand limit, and function value is equal. Similarly, left hand derivative and right hand derivative is equal. So I'm going to first solve this, and then I will discuss this. All right. So uh, here, let's find out uh, uh, the. Let's check the continuity at x equals to. Okay, at x equals to zero, we're going to check the continuity. So there, our left hand limit is going to be limit. You know x tends to 0 and since it is left hand limit so it's a little minus all right and then uh, g of x all right so you know uh, i think you have you have already the concept of what is left hand limit or right hand limit let me give you a small figure let's say uh, let's say this is a func function all right uh, just a rough uh, figure I'm, I'm saying if this is g of x let's say this is x and this is y axis then uh, this is our origin that's 0 all right here x equals to 0 then left hand limit means the, uh, the 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 value of the function when we approach it from the left hand side left hand side it means when the x is less than zero means when x is in negative form you know x is negative here so when we are approaching from left hand side we'll go to this point and we are coming from the right hand side that is called uh, this is your left hand limit and this is your right hand limit all right and if you find the functional value at that time and that is called f of zero all right so left hand limit f of zero and right hand limit all are equal okay so you need to consider that so zero minus means it's slightly less than zero it's not exactly zero but slightly less than zero and for the limit x tends to zero minus and g of x so when x is less than zero you know it's a little less less than zero whatever a little or more it is in negative section it is this side so whenever x is less than zero we have to take this thing 3x plus k so it's going to be 3x plus k and i'm going to plug the value of x um, and i'm going to insert the value of x so it will be 3 times 0 plus k and that's going to be k all right so our left hand limit is k and let me find out now right hand limit so to find right hand limit again limit x tends to 0 and plus i'm doing plus means a little more than that a little you know very very infinitely small changes i'm making but i'm going to add that small infinitely small quantity in this zero that's very close to zero but not exactly zero so when we approach from the right hand side towards the zero it will be approaching value we are actually find out from the left hand side and right hand side so it's going to be now limit uh, x tends to zero plus and here g of x when x is a little greater than zero then that time x is less than or i mean here x is greater than or equals to zero so it, it will be e to the power mx e to the power m of x so it's going to be now i'm going to plug the value of x so e to the power m and x is going to be zero so e to the power zero and anything to the power zero is equals to one now the functional value all right g of zero so g of zero is going to be now uh, simply when x is equals to zero all right when x is equals to zero it is e to the power mx so e to the power m into zero that is e to the power zero and that equals to one since you know the function is continuous so what i will write here since function is continuous question is saying at all points you know the question is saying here at all points but we are discussing here at x equals to zero so since the function is continuous at x equals to zero then definitely left hand limit should be equal with functional value should be equal with right hand limit all right left hand limit is our k that we get it here and our right hand limit is equals to one 
and our functional value is equals to 1. All right, so we got the value of k equals to 1. All right, we finished one part. And now we need to find out the value of m also because question is asking what is the value of m also. So to find out the value of m, we're going to take the second case. All right, we cannot find out the value of m by just checking the continuity here. So one thing, one more thing you need to keep in mind. If the function is differentiable, it means the limit is existing there, all right? So now let's find out the left hand, left hand derivative and right hand derivative, all right? At x equals to zero, let's check the, whether the function is differentiable or not. If it is differential, then the left hand derivative and right hand derivative should be equal. So I'm going to find out now at x equals to zero, left hand derivative. And left hand derivative will be limit uh, x tends to zero, or you can write like this also, h tends to zero, g of zero plus h, minus g of 0 divided by h this has been came uh, from the this has came from the definition of the derivative and I'm taking left hand derivative so it will be slightly 0 minus all right you know how this came actually let me tell you here uh, if this is x axis if this is y let's say this is a function and I'm going to check the differentiability of the function at let's say here x equals to 0 you know this time then uh, simply you know uh, while writing the definition of the derivative what do we write if f prime of x if you have a function f of x if it is function f of x then the derivative of the function is defined as f prime of x equals to limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h now in this case you know we are going to find out the derivative of function x gx so it will be g prime of x and here you know we're going to find out at x equals to 0 so this x will be actually 0 and it will be limit h tends to 0 f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 divided by h all right so this is what the definition of the uh, derivative is in the case of gx at the uh, at g equals to 0 and since we are approaching uh, from left hand side first so whenever we approach from left hand side you know so it will be uh, h 0 minus you know it's x equals to 0 we are finding out so we are just we're just going to approach and right? so it's approaching value when it is very close to zero exactly close to zero but a very 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 infinitely small quantity less than zero so that's why I just write zero minus or sometime in the book you might have seen h equals to zero minus zero so that is also means the same thing you know so this is left hand limit and if I'm approaching from the right hand side then that time I'll be using slightly it is bigger so that time I'll use zero plus all right or sometime you'll see zero plus zero all right so this is representing left hand derivative and this is for the right hand derivative all right so zero plus it will be so it's it's what it came from uh, uh, now let's go ahead so limit h tends to zero minus and g of zero plus h now see h is slightly less than zero slightly very very infinitely small less than zero so when x you know the when the variable is less than zero we have to take 3x plus k so here yeah, now it's going to be 3x plus k so 3 and x what is our x x is here 0 plus h all right and plus k let's k you can put the value of k also as a 1 if you don't put then also no problem at all again minus uh, 0 we are going to put in the value uh, it's because z of x is here now for this instant is 3x plus k all right so when I put here 0 plus h this x get replaced by 0 plus h and 3 and plus k all right now I'm going to insert here 0 so it will be 3 times 0 plus k all right so it will be now 3 times 0 and it will be minus k you know okay I'm writing plus the next time uh, I'll do this okay all right so now it's limit h equals h tends to 0 minus so it is 3 times 0 that is 0 and 3 times h that is 3 h plus k and again minus 3 times 0 that is 0 and 3 I mean and, and this k will be left and minus one will pass so it will be minus k divided by h and now this k and this k you can cancel up and in next step you can cancel h and h i'm doing here at one time only okay i'm doing here only so this h and h will cancel up and finally you'll get limit h tends to zero minus and no need to put the limit actually you'll just get a constant number so the limit is here just three so here the left hand derivative finally you're getting three now i'm going to find out the right hand derivative okay so right hand derivative again limit when h tends to zero and i'm going to plus because i'm approaching from the right hand side again okay, in the figure I'm approaching from the right hand side so from right hand side when I'm approaching it is slightly bigger than the zero all right so it's that's why you know zero plus something because it's very close to zero but not exactly zero it's slightly you know infinitely small bigger so that's why it's zero plus I already discussed that I think uh, 
I have a very bad habit of repeating again and again. Anyways, so it's uh, GF0 plus H minus GF0 divided by H. Okay, so again limit H tends to 0. So when our H is slightly bigger than 0, all right, when our variable is slightly bigger than 0, when X is slightly bigger than 0, we need to take E to the power M of X. So it's going to be e to the power mx. So m and x is here 0 plus h. 0 plus h. Again, e to the power m and it's 0, so it will be 0. Divided by h. It's going to be now limit. h tends to 0. And now here I'm getting e m will multiply 0, it will be 0. So m times h, e mh minus e to the power, it will be 0. Divided by h. And then further if you go, it's limit h it's 0 plus all right I'm forgetting this plus h tends to 0 plus e to the power mh minus anything to the power 0 you know anything to the power 0 that's 1 divided by h and now you know here if I'm just going to plug the value of h tends to 0 then that time e to the power m times 0 that will e to the power 0 that will be 1 1 minus 1 that's going to be 0 and here h is 0 so 0 by 0 it's you know indeterminate form so I have to do certain thing you know uh, to find out the derivative in this case, we have to use the L hospital rule and L hospital rule says that find the derivative of this upper portion and find the derivative of the lower portion and then insert the limit. Okay, so I'm going to find out the derivative. I'm going to differentiate this portion as well as this portion with respect to H. All right, so when I will do in the rough, uh, I know I will first do it here, right? Limit H tends to 0 plus and derivative of E to the power M of H, it will be E to the power M, you know, derivative of E, any power it is, it will be the same e to the power mh times and the derivative of the thing that is m and derivative of 1 that's 0 and derivative of h h is a, uh, it's a thing with which we are di differentiating so it will be ex actually I did this uh, you know I simply find out the derivative of e to the power m of h with respect to h but this is not matching you know so what I have to do I have to differentiate with respect to mh and in the next step I will differentiate m of h with respect to h so e to the power anything that will be the same e to the power mh and derivative of mh with respect to h it's m so that's what we get m times e to the power mh so that's our derivative so now i can plug the value all right if i'm plugging the value now then i will get uh, e to the power m times 0 times m it's 0 so i am not going to count and 1 so it's going to be e to the power 0 times m that's going to be 1 times m that's going to be m so I got my right hand derivative equals to m and since the function is differentiable at all points and it is differential at x equals to 0 also so left hand uh, derivative should be equal with right hand derivative so since g of x is differentiable at at x equals to 0 left hand derivative equals to right hand derivative left hand derivative is equals to 3 and right hand derivative equals to m so we get the value of m equals to 3 so this is how we find out the value of m as well as the value of the k. Here we find out the value of k that equals to 1 and m equals to 3. So you know, whenever you get these kinds of uh, things, unknown terms is in the equation. Then that time, you know, you have to just equate left hand derivative, uh, left hand limit, right hand limit and the functional value. If it is just continuous. If it is differentiable also, then you have to equate left hand derivative and right hand derivative. And by doing so, you can almost find out the every unknown quantities. I hope you understand it. Goodbye.